I've been working on a room in our basement to turn it into a metalworking space for me and a model train area for my son and garage type storage that we don't have as we have a, a carport. <laughs> and I've gotten to the point where I'm working on the ceiling. I sort of got sidetracked at this point and I've made a lift to hold the ceiling panels up to the ceiling to help in hanging them on the ceiling. I wanted to do something that I could cut out of a sheet of plywood. I modeled my initial ideas on the computer and I came up with something that I thought would work. It's basically a piston that runs on a rack gear, but I wasn't entirely sure it was going to go together. So the process I came up with was to take the model I had made, draw that as parts in a CAD program as flat 2D pieces, then bring those parts back into SketchUp where I was doing the 3D model and build the lift as though I was building it out of parts that I had cut on the CNC machine. And I think I did two iterations of this. So I, I modeled it, I drew it, then I built it, then I adjusted my drawings, re-imported the drawings and then built it again, then made some fine adjustments and had something that I thought would go together and work. And in doing it this way, it sort of forced me to build the 3D model with the parts that I was going to cut out. Instead of just building a 3D model with whatever I would make in the computer, I would hold myself to what I was actually going to be cutting out. And that did seem to help find places where things didn't go together right and where I was missing pieces and refining the shapes of the pieces so that they would fit together correctly. When I had it as close as I thought I could get it in the computer, I did the cam work in Aspire and just laid out several passes for the CNC machine. Because I had holes and things and I had some dados to cut, I couldn't just do it all in one pass. So I found a sheet of plywood that I had in the shop and it's the, I'm not sure what the name of this kind of plywood is, it's the kind with the thinner layers. So it's got lots of layers of material, but it's a cheap version of that. It isn't the really nice stuff, <laughs> but it cut pretty easily. So what I ended up doing as far as cutting is I did a shallow pass of all of the shapes. And once I did that, I could then add some more nails to hold it down and make sure the nails were right where I wanted them so that I wasn't holding down the pieces. I was holding down the, the space between the pieces. This is the perfect project for a big vacuum table, but I don't have that. <laughs> So then the next thing I cut were the dados that I wanted to make. Then I had two passes of holes that I wanted to cut because I had some objects that were made in the hole of a bigger project and they had a hole in them. So I had two passes of holes. And once the, the holes and the dados were cut, I could cut out the pieces and I kept my zero zero in the same place so I could go back and cut over that same shallow pass that I had done at first and finish cutting out all the parts. Then I could pull the parts off. I used bridges to hold them in place while they're being cut and I seem to have gotten it about right where they were held in place while they were being cut but they popped out of the material pretty easily. And I cleaned up the outside edge, both to get the bridges off and the, the cut was a little bit fuzzy. So I did the convex curves and the flat parts on the disc sander and the concave curves on the spindle sander. And I had several different size spindles to go through. Sort of the, the big curves with the big spindle and the smaller curves with the smaller spindle. And it actually wasn't too bad doing everything. It didn't take too long. It's all pretty easy stuff. 
And I sanded the dados with a block of wood and some sandpaper wrapped around it. Now two of the pieces that I didn't fit onto the cutout were the rails that go on each side of the rack. So I cut those out at this point and they're just gonna be simple rectangles. So they fit inside the center column and they're what the, the rack and the, the vertical moving piece rides against. So I, I fit them in place to see if they'd fit. Now this took longer putting the parts together. I think because I didn't want to do something that I couldn't go back and fix. Like I knew that I had to put, put this together in the right order, and, but I wasn't exactly sure what that order was. Like I didn't want to do something that would end up being in the way of a future step. So there are some supports for the axle for the gears that go on the strips that I made. And those need to be put in before I put the strips into the center of the center column. But once I have those two halves made, I can then put that column together. And really that's just adding the pieces on the back that fit into a dado. I guess this is a rabbit. <laughs> now I've got a dowel in the hole where the, where the dowel axle is gonna go just to make sure my sides are lined up correctly. Cause really that's all that matters with this piece is that that dowel works. <laughs> And once I had it set with a few pieces, I could put the other pieces in. Now the back I made out of smaller parts, so those parts would fit better in my layout on the sheet of plywood. And I, I sort of clamped all that, let it dry. Now before I put the base and the legs together, I wanted to drill the holes for the casters to go in place. And these holes probably could have been cut on the CNC machine but I ended up doing it afterwards. One of those things that I forgot about. <laughs> then I can glue the rack together, which is the, the center that moves up and down. And it's basically two pieces of wood glued into a T for the structure. And I'm clamping some right angle pieces just to hold it at 90 degrees. And I can put that together. Then the base can go together. So it's a matter of making each of the four legs and it's just two pieces put together, making a T again. So once I have the four legs, I can lay those out I wanted to glue the four legs together and I needed a way to clamp them and I wondered if my band clamp would work. So I got that out and with a little bit of futzing around, it worked really well. And setting it up beforehand really helped because the strap was at the right length when I got the glue out. So that putting the clamp on the second time went really quickly. And it takes a little bit of adjustment to get the joints tight. Then there's some little pieces of blocking that go over that joint and help hold it together. Now the little notch in this blocking is one of the things I discovered while building the model in the computer. That, that's the kind of little thing that you'll miss <laughs> if you just model something up without any rigor of actually having to use parts that you're going to cut out. And the center column needs to be flat on the bottom. And my fur strips that I made stuck out just a little tiny bit. So I made everything flush. That bottom of the column is gonna sit against the rabbit in the bottom of the legs. Now one thing I missed while modeling was that I need a little notch in the bottom of the leg assembly for the rails on the rack gear to slide past the, the legs. So I needed to cut a little notch out of the bottom. This should have been cut on a CNC machine, but it's fine. 
it works. <laughs> Now, another set of parts that I didn't cut on the CNC were some pieces of blocking that help hold the leg assembly to the center column. Then I can finish cutting the blocking. So the 45 degree angle on this will mesh with the leg and the flat part will sit against the center column and it will help hold the center column to the legs. Now, I didn't realize how hard it was going to be to get the nail gun in to attach these. So there's a ring that goes around the top of the leg assembly that holds the center column and it helps hold the top of the legs. And I'll put some screws through the leg assembly that will attach to the center column. Now I made what are basically bearings. They're not ball bearings, they're not roller bearings. They're just a sleeve for the axles to, to fit in. And they'll allow me to adjust exactly where the gears are in relation to each other when I'm putting the piece together. And I made the axles and I sanded them a little bit so they're smoother. Now, originally I had thought I would glue the gears and the handle and all of the things that attach to the axles to the axles. But in thinking about it, that meant that it was going to be permanent and I didn't know that the glue was really going to be strong enough. I was thinking about it a little more like a machinist. Most connections between a pulley and an axle or a gear and an axle will have a, a keyway with a little key. So there's a mechanical piece that, that that force can be transferred between the axle and the gear. So I figured in doing screws, that was a little bit like that. I put a little wax on the inside of my bearing pieces. Now for the upper gear that meshes with the rack gear, I could put it all in place and screw the bearings in in the location that would hold the gear in the right place. Then I could attach that gear to the axle. Now the lower gear can be adjusted up and down and the gear was sort of in the way when putting the bearing in place so I had to mark where the bearings should go, then take the gear off, clamp the bearings in place, and screw them into the frame and hope they're in the right place. And if they're not, I can take the screws out, rotate the bearing a little bit, and put the screws into a new place. So it's really not a big deal. And that seemed to work pretty well. Now for the big gear, I thought this would actually be a really good use of pocket screws. I could pocket screw the big gear to the axle. And that worked really well. And I can attach the lower gear. And I tested it with the drill. It seemed to work pretty well. And I can attach the handle. And with that, I put a screw in each side and one pocket screw parallel with the, with the handle or with the crank, I guess. I put wax on the rack gear where it slides within the center column and I could put it together. Now, up until this point, I didn't know whether this would work. It was all just kind of this idea I had in my head. My fear was there was some fatal error I had made that would just make it not work. It just, it just wouldn't move when you move the handle. Or, or when you move the handle, the whole thing fell apart. And it worked better than I thought it was going to. So I could put the wheels on. And I'm using bolts that I salvaged from somewhere else. That's why they're a little long. And I gave up with a hand wrench and just used the drill after a while. Now, one part that I had cut out and haven't put on yet is the stop that will hold it in place so it won't come down. And it needed to be something that would let it go up but not let it go down. So I made a little arm 
with a tooth in it that will mesh with the big gear. And I needed to make a piece that would go in the back that that arm could attach to. And this is another piece that could have been cut out on the CNC. In fact, a thought I've had after doing this was that this could also be a handle. And this is the place that you drag the whole piece around with. So I attached a piece in the back. Now it sticks out a little bit from the side because the big gear is away from the side, one thickness of plywood. So this little piece sticks out by about that much. Then I can attach the arm and leave the screw a little bit loose so that the arm will move. And this actually worked better than I thought it was going to work as well. One little issue was that the arm tends to fall towards the frame. So I used one of the little circles I had cut out as a spacer. And I just screwed that to the side. And this will just keep the stop from falling in towards the frame. Now one thing I need is a handle for the crank. So I thought I could wood turn a little piece for that. Originally I had envisioned a longer handle that you put your whole hand around. But in thinking about it, I wasn't going to have the handle rotate. It was just going to be rigidly attached. So I thought something more like a little knob would be better. Some, something that you put your hand around or over, I guess. So it's more of a small doorknob than a handle that you grasp. So I first made a cylinder. Then from that cylinder, I could make the knob that I was working on. And I could work on the end. Then once I had the end done, I could form more of the, the ball at the end of the knob. And I could sand, and I didn't sand it too high on the grid. I think I just went to 220. I wanted it smooth, but not too smooth. <laughs> then I could cut that off. And I sanded the bottom a little bit, just to get the, the last little bit of the piece that I'd cut off smooth. Then I could attach it to the crank and I have a knob. And with the knob, it's a lot easier. It really does help. So then we tried actually using it in the basement. Calvin really wanted to use it, so he came down to help. Now this one in the corner is a little difficult because we've got a pipe in the way and a cabinet kind of in the way, but it really did help. I think once we get out into the middle of the room, it'll be a lot easier. But it is nice that it holds it up against the ceiling and you can get the panel adjusted into just the right spot before it starts getting attached. Now I've got, I think, two, maybe three other areas in the basement that need ceiling work. So this will come in handy in the future. Thanks for watching.